Good morning, YouTube, and today we have for you a Karibo deck profile. This is one that uh, a lot of people enjoyed, and I've really enjoyed this deck too. So I figured I'd put a few changes in there and throw an updated profile. Let's hop into it. Starting off with our monsters, we run, of course, a playset of the OG original Karibo. Um, this is something that's kind of a staple, and if you want to build a Karibo deck for the gimmickiness, this is something you want to run. Um, my boys uh, at Owls gave me this nice little secret rare, and or traded for me, and it was really nice, and I had these two male raiders, so I figured I'd just throw it in there. Um, next, we run a playset of Wing Karibo. This is, of course, protects you from all battle damage after it's sent to the graveyard, destroyed by battle. Essentially, the deck, especially with your flu of summoning Karibo, you want to run a playset of both of those Karibos. Next, run a playset of Curryborn. This is always this is probably one of the best cards in the deck. Um, at the end of battle phase, you can discard it and then target a monster that was set to the grave that was destroyed by battle this turn and special summon it. But that's not the best effect, although I figure out a neat application with it. Um, the best effect is you can banish it from the graveyard at, um, when the opponent's monster declares an attack to special summon any amount of Karibos from your graveyard. So that gives you a lot of uh, advantage and allows you to go for a lot of your plusing plays that you can do. Uh, next run, a playset of Rainbow Karibo. This is, of course, protects your, um, stops your opponent's monster from battling, and can special summon itself from the graveyard once. It's pretty darn great. Uh, next run, a playset of the Spear Karibo. Um, if you've noticed, this, this, the monster lamp's almost exactly the same. There's a few little changes. This is, of course, an enemy controller for your opponent's monster, which is battle position. And if you want to use a uh, ritual, you can banish it from the graveyard as a material instead. Um, so we're going to play set of that. And we still run a playset of Reliant Karibo. Um, when he's tributed, draw a card, so that's including a Ritual Summon, uh, so it's great. If, it would, if a monster you control will be destroyed by battle, you can banish this from the graveyard instead. Always fantastic. And of course, we still run two Clear Karibo. Uh, during either player's turn, when your opponent activates a monster effect that would inflict damage, i.e. Trick Stars, you can discard this card and negate the activation when your opponent's monster declares a direct attack. You can banish it from your graveyard, draw a card, and if it's a monster, you can special summon it. So there's a lot of fun little applications you could do with Clear Karibo that, um, it's not that bad of a card. Of course, it's another name for Karibo, and it's a light target, so it's essential as it will, as we move on. Next, we still play a playset of Curry Bandit. This, of course, still does not count for your Curry Born, since it does not count as a Curry Bow, and it's a three-star monster, but it gives you some nice little applications, and of course, sending cards from your deck to your graveyard, adding your needed spells, and a dark target. Just something that I've really enjoyed and haven't really found to be dead as much, because you don't use your normal summon too much. Uh, next, we now run a place at a Black Luster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning. This is essentially your your primary win condition. It gives you, um, it's really easy to get out. You're about half, half, 50-50, give or take a few darks and lights, and it's really easy to get this guy out. Plus, a neat little application you can do is um, if your Black Luster Soldier is sent to the graveyard by battle, you can use your Reliant Karibo, or sorry, you can use your Curry Born to bring it back because it specifies on Black Luster Soldiers that it has to be first special summoned by its effect. So it's really nice if you want to like crash into a monster then you can bring it back during the end phase with your Curry Born. It's pretty darn nice and it's a uh really synergizes well with this deck for some strange reason. Uh, next, we run two Relinquished. Of course, we have our Spear Karibo that we want to use this with. Um, Stealing Opponent's Monster is a one-star. You're always going to have the right target. It's always live, and it somehow synergizes with this deck for some strange reason, so I play it as two off still in it because your primary focus is, of course, the Karibos and getting out the XCs and other uh, nifty things you can do. Next, we run a playset of Fluid Summoning Karibo. This is an unlimited amount of summons or adding cards from your deck to your hand. It's just a free, free advantage and nothing wrong with it. I keep, wouldn't change it from three for anything. Uh, next, we run a playset of Instant Fusion. There's still a little bit of gimmicky changes that I've done with the extra deck, but still nice to see it as three because you want to see those Instant Fusion targets, so we run it as three. And again, to go with our two Relinquish, we run two Black Illusion Ritual. Of course, essential to bring out Relinquish, so we run into two. And I've bumped up pre-preparation of rights from one to two. Um, it's a little bit nicer to see Relinquish earlier on in the game. Um, hopefully, you don't run it as a dead card, but if if so, if you already have like a Black Illusion Ritual or Relinquish, you can use uh, one of your Relinquish as a material or something else. I don't know, it hasn't been dead to me at two, so I keep it at two for now. It's pretty darn nice. A Monster Reborn, because of course, Black Luster Soldier, like we mentioned before, can be brought back after it's uh, set to the graveyard. 
um, from its initial summon. So we run this in here, it's nice, and there's some nice little other cards that you can bring back, just regular Karibos or a Wing Karibo if you want to install a little bit, little bit longer to uh, gain your advantage back. Uh, next, we're still running a one-day piece because of game. The name of this game is stalling um, because curry bows aren't a lot of attack. <laughs> they don't have a lot of attack, so this gives you, of course, your little minute advantage um, and gives you into your play combos. It's pretty darn cool. I still run it as one, a uh, one for one because all of your targets, of course, one star. So this is nice. It sets up your graveyard for your blackluster soldier or your curry born. Um, gives you any curry bow from your deck. It's just a fantastic card that you won't really want to not run. Uh, Foolish Barrel, of course, to either set up for your um, Black Luster Soldier or set up for, let's say, your Spear Karibo or set up to um, get your Curry Born. It's always just a fantastic card to run in any deck that relies on the Graveyard, which this deck does. Moving on to our extra deck. We, not, we don't run one. We don't run two. We run three. Um, Link Karibo. Do you need three? Absolutely not. Um, I would say one is needed, um, especially with the new structure that came out. You can buy this for semi-cheap. Um, two is recommended. Three is a little bit overkill, but I have a great time with it. Plus, it is, in fact, a Curry Bow monster. So you can, in fact, bring it back with the Curry Born. So, I mean, usually, yeah, you can use it for its own effect to bring it back, but it's pretty darn nice and sets up for some interesting little plays that I'll show you here after a bit. Next, we run an Underclock Taker. Um, this is kind of essential too, especially if you have, let's say you have a Relinquished and you have a normal summonable light monster and you have a BLS in your hand. There's no way to get it out that turn except for like um, uh, with an Underclock Taker. For example, if you have a Flu Summoning Karibo, you can bring out the Karibo that you don't have, normal summon the other one, go for an Underclock Taker, then you have two cards set up for your Blackluster Soldier on the way to the beginning. Plus, you can even equip or uh, link it to your Underclock Taker and make your opponent lose 3,000 attack, and that's a monster that can attack twice. It's pretty darn great to have this. So we run the Underclock Taker as one. Fantastic. Uh, for instant fusion targets, run three, we bumped it up to 3,000 eyes restrict. Um, yes, the Millennium Eyes Restrict is pretty cool, but 1,000 eyes is really one of those cards that's always kind of held up. And um, yes, you could take out one because you'll rarely see it, um, but I like it as three. A uh, invoked Ragin because Ragin's is a nice Book of Moon effect. I just wanted another extra instant fusion target that wasn't dead. So um, I ran in. Invoke Region. Moving on to our Exceeds, we run a number 54 Lionheart. This is one of your other win conditions of the deck. Um, you can detach Exceeds Fertilla from it, and your opponent will take all battle damage involving him instead of you. You can do that three times because it requires three materials. Plus, additionally, even if you don't detach Exceeds material, your opponent will take all battle or will take the battle damage you took as well. So it's either all or nothing. Um, you don't get as doubled up and stacked, but it's pretty darn good and a really great card as is that you can bring out with, pretty easily with this deck. Next, I run a Lyricist, um, Recital Starling. And the interesting thing about it is that you know, when it succeeds something, you can target a monster on the field. It gains 300 attack defense for each succeeds material on this card. You can, of course, get five with the Kukuri Born. Well, once a turn, you can detach and seize material at a level one beast from your deck to your hand. That's not something that you can possibly do with this deck, but its last effect is what's really essential. All damage you take from those battles involving a succeed summon card is also inflicted to your opponent. Deja Vu. It's like a cheaper version of number 54 Lionheart, but it requires two materials, and it's a nice little additional thing that you can do early game to give you that little bit of advantage, hopefully, to push for game. And we also run a Lyricist... Um, excuse me, Lycoris, uh, assembled Nightingale, because this is another, aka, like a little bit of a win condition, give or take. Um, you could bring this card out, and it gains 200 attack for each um, Exceeds material attached to it. If you have five materials, it becomes 1,000 attack. Plus, it can attack for each material attached to it. So when you have the five materials, you can attack with 1,000 five, five times, that's 5,000 damage, nothing to complain about at all. Plus, even so, even if you don't get out with a full amount, um, let's say you just get out with two, that's 800 damage. That's enough to win you games at times. And so it's definitely required at one. Not required. It's definitely recommended at one, in my opinion. Next, we're on two Sylvan Princess Sprites. It's nicer to see. There's a lot of spell cards in this deck. So um, it's nice to see them as early as possible. We run her. Um, she's a bit of a higher attack 
um, rank one, which is a little bit strange to say, 1800, but it gives you some play starters and they're really great. Next, we run a Slacker Magician. The nice part about this is it negates cards that specifically target other cards, and you can destroy the card. It's a good defender. It's not the first thing you want to go for, but it's not bad, in my opinion. And we have space, so we run it at one. And rounding up our extra deck, we're going to a Ghost Trick Dulahan. This card I thought was a little bit better, um, but you can have an opponent's attack on, on a monster. Um, it's okay, but there's better stuff out there. But if you're trying to set up like a BLS, it's not that bad. And you can, um, there's definitely applications you could do with it. Okay, next we're going to go into a bit of a late game combo. Um, what's really required in your hand is any um, level 1 curry build of any sort and a Black Lotus Soldier. But your graveyard is really what matters. You're going to have yourself a curry born and at least five different curry bows. This isn't too insane with cards such as Curry Bandit or with your wing curry bow being able to stall so well or even your regular curry bow. This isn't too insane of a graveyard to possibly have. So you're going to have those in your graveyard. Your opponent declares an attack. Of course, you're going to banish your curry born and special summon all of your curry bows. The only important thing at this point in time is to make sure that your link curry bow is not in an extra monster zone pointing down spot because you're going to uh, need that spot here in a moment. So progressing on your turn, you're gonna link, you're gonna draw your card, you're gonna link away your regular Karibo in this slot, and we're gonna go for a link Karibo. Woohoo, how, how original. Um, next, we're going to use our link Karibo and our wing Karibo that happens to be in the spot that's to the left of the spot underneath the link Karibo, and we're gonna go into our boy, the underclock taker. All right, at this point in time, you will normal summon your regular Karibo and overlay for three, whoops, and throwing all your cards, cards away around is uh, essential, of course. For your number 54, Lionheart. And next, you will now banish um, one of your regular Karibos and a potential wing Karibo or something in the graveyard to go a black for, for a Black Cluster Soldier Envoy at the beginning. Now, this is a pr you have two of your wing conditions on the board. You can lower their attack. Of course, you can go for like a Silver and Princess Sprite. And if you want more damage, take it off from the Underclock Taker. This is just kind of a safer play. You can have your Link Karibo ready to protect you from any battle damage your next turn. Black Cluster Soldier can attack twice. This is a really just an interesting board that I've conjured up with, and I hope that you can grab something from this deck. And really, it's just a fun thing and gimmicky, and hope you can come with some neat combos and show them to me if you can pop, if you, uh, if you come up with them, or if you have your own new little texts, feel free to let me know. I'm really interested, and this is a really fun deck. Um, I made this at a regional when I was doing poorly. I dropped out, and I was like, I'm just going to build a Karibo deck. And the people came by, and they're really interested in it. And then one guy said, you know what I hate? It's the people who play Karibos. Anyway, it's just it's a really fun deck, um, especially with the release of uh, uh, Relink Karibo. It's just gained more um, accessibility, too, with the structure deck. It's a really fun deck. I hope you can pick it up and grab something from this profile. I've blabbered on long enough. Um, thank you, and have a great day.